I think my ADHD has is, is always been so bad that I, I've always needed to like just do something with my hands, like twisting knobs and figuring out how, how, it, how it all works together. I'm, it's like a toy store with all this crazy vintage analog gear and stuff, so. Really, it does instantly inspire you when you sit down to play. It's, it's crazy. So we're up at uh, the Sound Toys studio this weekend recording a new track of ours called Dividends. And it's a crazy space with tons of awesome vintage gear. We've been experimenting a lot with different setups and just kind of a different process each time. And when this project was started, everything was done on the computer. And what we'll do usually is prepare a demo with all the, uh, the foundation of the song. Sometimes, before there's a song, there's a fragment. And because I'm more of a writer, I have like, I have notebooks full of fragments of lyrical ideas that have no melodies attached. And so sometimes I'll have a conversation or I'll be at a bar and I'll like hear some people talking and I'll just like hear something kind of interesting and I'll either like make a note of it in my phone or if I have a notebook, I'll like scribble it down really quick and I save all those bits and pieces. And um, this song um, started from one of those fragments. Now mainly we'll go into the studio to track drums, track vocals, you know, guitars, like acoustic instruments. What's been really cool about finishing up Dividends here is that when we first got here, they showed us all these tools that we had, you know, everyone had their own little station. Hello, 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 so, hello, hello. So this is just a straight vocal and it goes through this mic pre, which is this guy right here. Uh -huh. It's an old uh, Helios Type 69, it's kind of cool. Um, old Mike Pree has a lot of history. And then it's going to this compressor, yeah. Fairchild 660, also tons of history. But you really don't need to know anything about any of this. You just do your thing and it's, it's going to be good. Each person has his or her own station where they have their normal instruments that they would be playing. But then they also have little submixers that return a variety of effects um, that hopefully will inspire them to find new colors in the music and have uh, a new conversation, maybe one that they haven't had before. I'm not used to having this much control. Right? Usually it's Kenny not has that control. That's, kind of, that's sort of the idea here, is that you get to have the effects. That's I mean, Arrow has cool. own scene, of course, but it's a bit of a shame that, you know, in the studio, most of the, the engineers are the one that deals with the effects, but here, um, the idea is to see what happens when they're in your hands, you know? I mostly like reverb. Yeah. For a couple songs, distortion makes... As creatives, it's really cool to hang out with people that are making the stuff that we're using, you know, the software that we're using to create music, that's fucking awesome. And that's definitely a first for us. It's fascinating that you can actually use one Thunderbolt cable to get into a computer and record everything on a laptop, which is a far cry from what we used to do back in the day. The idea with this is that, you know, you're, there's no control room. You're in it with musicians, kind of in the style of, uh, you know, the, uh, the barn at Bearsville or the Neva Middle Air, these rooms where, you know, you're all in the room with the artist and, uh, this is a little different in the sense that we put the, a lot of the effects in the hands of the artist too, which is, you know, maybe a little unusual. That might not be good. But you can good. plop down and, uh, <laughs> and with one cable, you know, with one Thunderbolt cable, you're, you know, you're running the system and, and you get to set on the cell phone instead of the desk, so. Best of the future and the past, that's, you know? That's the gig. It's awesome. I think that there's a certain type of creativity that it sparks inside of you that you don't have the traditional, you know, uh, acoustically treated room and uh, having all the gear there. And uh, second, I've been sitting on a couch for the last couple days, which is <laughs> completely not normal for me. You want to just go from the top? Sure. Um, do you want to hear what it sounds like with Brush? For level? Being thrown in the same room with the artist is definitely something that doesn't happen to me on a daily basis anymore. So I, I miss that. And that's, you know, just being part of this was uh, made me realize there's still just as much of an art to recording than there is to mixing. Yeah. 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 
I think that if I were to have mixed it on my own and received the files, it would be different because they, they were used to it. But I think with artists, it's important that if you're working with them from conception, there's no separation of engineer, producer, and artist. They're, we're all in it together. Dividends is really unique because it doesn't have a traditional song structure. And for me, it was just kind of figuring out what sounds, what little textures can I add that will really enhance the whole song. I think that um, there's a lot of really cool ideas in there that like, I think maybe just like, like taking some of those fills and stuff and putting them on like. I think the clap might be kind of cool actually. Three, click, like dun, that. Dun, yeah, maybe uh, like the space uh, we know each other so well at this point that we know each other's voice and we can recognize a vision when we hear it and when we see it unfold. I don't know if they've ever been in a situation where they've had this much exposure to these classic pieces and having them all in one room at their disposal, that completely changes your, your perspective and, and uh, the idea is that you probably, I'm sure they came up here thinking one thing and then having all this uh, equipment just made them think completely different and outside the box. I think too it could be cool. I could do a, like a yeah, that would, that would like a really cool. low one, like low in the mix. I don't see a new synth and like lose my shit and like write a new song. Like no, that would never happen. <laughs> Kenny and Isabel just like immediately were touching everything and playing and like I vibe off of them. And so watching them have that experience is an experience for me. Um, but I think for me individually, like, it's experiences, it's people, it's input, it's like food and smells and places. That's what does it for me. Having these two synths uh, up here have been really inspiring. You can't, you can't do anything that sounds bad on that. It all just sounds crazy, super fat. And uh, I, yeah, last night we had this crazy like industrial like Matrix Nine Inch Nails jam with like that and the Jupiter going. Isabel was playing on that too. <laughs> Also, the uh, the Eventide H3000 too. It just we we actually ran all the synths through that and, and just coming up with crazy effects on that. It's really easy for us to just kind of get carried away. It's just the sounds are so cool, you know. But you know, the, the, those are sometimes how our best songs come out. Is we'll accidentally be playing around with stuff and be like, oh, this sounds really cool. I always try to get the artist to just go by feeling. It's like, yeah, you could sit there and punch in lines and you can, you can take it section by section, but there's something to be said that when you capture a feeling, that, that's, hard to, that's hard to do, you know? Yeah, it was just a while. Should I start going so that you can hear what it sounds yeah. like? Uh, like singing notes? Acapella, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if you hear something you like, yeah. just, Tell us to stop. Okay. I mean, you don't have to sing like uh, like it's a take, you know? Okay. Like, just kind of get, feel the reverb. Kenny's opinion and like his reassurance is extremely pivotal to the forward momentum of any song or any work that we do. Give me all, give me all attention. Sounds really, it's like it yeah. matches a lot of the. Y'all give me back. Someone I gave to you. Do you want to keep playing with other stuff? I'm good with. 
as soon as you hear the vibe, that's, I, I, I stop. I'm good. I'm good. I think this is the vibe. Yeah. I think it's really good. One of the things I wanted to do was print the uh, the wet signal of the vocal with uh, with you know we had a Dimension D, a Lexicon Reverb, um, a little bit of a PCM 42. And just blending those together, she was involved in picking the sound as I'm moving the faders on the Neves. Give me that, give me that little bit of satisfaction Through all the dividends I give away for free We were kids back then, but we had an understanding I'll care for you And you'll care for me Let's run it back. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna, I wanna listen to the one. Oh, we'll just listen. There's something about everybody looking at you like, okay, it's time to finish the song that can fuel, you know, um, like creative pressure. Like, you know, sometimes pressure's good. Other times it's not. That one was solid. Uh, it could be better. Yeah, I think you're good. Getting, that was that was a good. It was consistent. Mm -hmm. Now I'm running into that thing where I know I could do it in one take, but I also know that I could drive everyone insane by trying to do if that. You feel for if a long you time. feel like you can get it, I personally think. I think for a song like this, it'd be really cool to get it in one take because it's kind of free. I think you can absolutely get it. Yeah, I do too. I think for this song, it makes sense. It's not like a traditional pop song. Like every part happens once, right? And so much changes from beginning to end. And it's it's there's it a lot of natural like, dynamics right. in it yeah, too. Should I just keep going? Should we even listen back? Should I just keep I going? I think you should just go. Yeah, I again. think you should just go too. Okay. All right. My job is to is to bring the best out of the artist. And uh, I, I don't know, I was raised on that. I was raised on on making sure that they they're they think less of being perfect than more of capturing the right mood or the vibe or whatever the song. I'll care for you, and you care for me. Wow. Yeah, that one felt really nice. Should we listen back to the last one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was like... The next process is kind of stripping things down and, um, and figuring out what we really want to highlight, uh, what's going to be the focus in the mix. Being in the box at this point, it's, it's my instrument. You know, the DAW's my instrument. I have like endless options in the box to be able to, uh, to sculpt the way that I want to sculpt and, you know, just think outside the box, even though I'm in the box. <laughs> Shit. I'm a vibes person, I'm a people person, I'm a vibes person. Everybody's just been fucking crazy awesome and real and easy to talk to and get along with and that's what I remember. I remember people. That's what I'll remember. So another thing that informs the way that this place is set up is inspired by the great Bob Olson from Motown Studios. Bob said uh, once before that uh, a recording studio is a place set up primarily as a performance space. It should be designed as a place to play music where you happen to record, not the other way around. Ooh. 